we're really excited to jump into seeing this Big Jam toolkit about how their design team has coached their product designers to build a culture of professional growth. Once again, my name is Mallory. I'm a designer advocate. You can find me on social as MD in Design. And now I want to pass it off to Brent and Caitlin to introduce themselves and start their presentation. Hey everyone, to introduce myself, I'm Brent Palmer. I manage the product design team here at Mixpanel. Eight designers, different levels across three zones. And I'm based here in Austin, Texas. And I've been with Mixpanel for about mm, one year. And I'll pass it to Caitlin. Hi everyone, um, I'm Caitlin. Um, I'm a product design team lead here at Mixpanel. I've been here for three years. And yeah, located just outside of Seattle in the mountains and stoked to be here with you all today. So Brent's going to get us started. Yeah, this will be fun. Um, we'll be traveling along here in Fig Jam. This is sort of like how we do a lot of our meetings. And so this will feel like a one-on-one -on -one together with 238 of our closest friends. So this will be great. Uh, for those of you who don't know much about Mixpanel, we're a product analytics company. So if you design an interface, kiosk, mobile app, website, B2B SaaS, B2C, B2B to C, uh, your customers and your end users create events and we track that. So teams of all sizes can jump in without a data background and understand kind of what their end users are doing at scale. We are 400 employees worldwide. We have 7,000-ish mm, customers and we track about a million events a day. We're Y Combinator alum, actually, and are headquartered and founded in San Francisco in 2009. But you're probably not here to hear about Mixpanel. You want to know more about, gosh, how does Mixpanel use FigJam in their one-on-ones? How do managers leverage that? And then how can I use this precisely kind of in my life? So a lot of these starter packs you'll see today are really built on a lot of frameworks, I guess you could say, like standing on the shoulders. So a lot of the popular frameworks here are just more or less open source and they're tried and true just kind of over the years. And we've put them in Fig Jam just because that's where we're more comfortable. That's where we're flexible. That's where we want to, to operate. So we have six right now templates within Fig Jam that we kind of leverage here and there. Uh, today we'll cover three and they're along the lines of kind of sequential. Um, the first one will be about setting expectations and new relationships and how you do that during a one-on-one. -on -one. The second one is more later. So if you want to get deeper in building trust, understanding what motivators and core beliefs are between the two of you. And then third one will be around coaching for impact. So closer towards a performance review, really about delegation. And all these tools um, are designed to help you and your team feel like Edie and have a good time. Yeah. So who is this for exactly? Uh, this is great for new managers. So if you have an, if you're transitioning from individual contributor to manager, there's probably some new muscles and new skills you're needing to develop. And you're already kind of designing interfaces as a contributor. Now you can use a lot, utilize FigJam uh, design careers and help your direct reports. So it helps with that transition because you're already in a tool that you're familiar with. And these set of guidelines and set of templates will help mm, de-stress that a little bit and kind of help facilitate the right prompts, ask the right questions and get better answers. This is also for experienced managers too, potentially. So, you know, not all one-on-ones are the same. So it's just great to just pause a minute and experiment, try something new. So use these prompts and use these templates to maybe facilitate and listen well, adapt and your answers and your approach and receive these responses and have a dialogue around that, and then maybe adjust your coaching style during your one-on-ones based on some of these templates and what comes out of it. Also, this is for individual contributors. I think this is really important just to do self-reflection on your own and be proactive. So own that work experience in your current job. Don't wait for your manager. So if you wanna be proactive and bring these things to a particular one-on-one -on -one, or even carve out a career conversation with your boss, do that. These templates will help facilitate some really good dialogue between you and your boss. And you don't really need to do it in that context or setting either. You could go solo. I think some of these frameworks for me personally have been helpful to just zoom out and understand kind of what I believe and where I want to go just in my own kind of 
career path and career journey. So it's great to do some self-reflection on your own. Um, also during mentoring sessions. So Kayla and I are part of a platform called ADP List, which helps uh, we, we maybe a couple times a month, we spend an hour or so mentoring junior designers and UX designers on this platform. And these templates are really helpful to kind of maximize and make the most out of those conversations. So they're useful there too. So why now? Um, this is Amy. Uh, Amy is our VP of strategy and people at Mixpanel. She's a legend. She's great. And uh, she was responsible for this one of three company strategies called people as competitive advantage. And what's funny is two of the, of the three company strategies for 2023 in Mixpanel, two of them are product and one of them is about people. And that speaks volumes to how we're trying to invest in just not only individual contributor growth, but also to developing managers. And there's a lot of goals that kind of hang off of that. One of them is enabling our owners to grow. And the other one is investing in manager development. So it's, we found that getting managers and leads um, to come to a carve out time since they're already time poor to come to like a cohort learning has been kind of a challenge. And so how do we provide tools and guidance kind of where they are in their day to day? And I'm gonna hand it over to Caitlin to talk about kind of why this is important now um, from a human and team standpoint. Awesome. Thanks, Brett. Yeah. So why now? Human connection. So human connection provides us with a sense of belonging and validation. Um, and it's fostered by relationships that are built on trust, respect, and empathy, which in turn helps us be more resilient and better equipped to face challenges. So especially during times of uncertainty, people value feeling safe, connected, and supported. Um, so it can be essential for teams to reassess if their current tools and processes are fitting the needs of their members and ensure that they help to foster human connection. Next slide. All right. So approaching this like we do as designers, um, we asked ourselves a few questions. So how might we foster a safe and inclusive design team culture? Um, how might we coach designers where they're most comfortable? And how might we grow designers at all levels? So what can we influence right now? Uh, where can we get started? And what are the needs of the team in this moment? So the tools and frameworks companies typically use for personal and professional growth uh, that I have had experience with um, can be one size fits all, sometimes a little bit rigid and not always as well designed as that core set of tools that we use almost every day as designers. Uh, so we were looking for something collaborative, a place where designers are familiar and comfortable, um, something that offers flexibility with a structure that we can tweak and improve upon. Uh, we weren't necessarily looking to replace those other tools, rather something that could be complementary and just add greater value to the overall experience. So guess where happy place is? <laughs> Big Jam. Uh, so as Big Jam has quickly gained popularity here at Mixpanel across all different teams, um, we realized that, you know, this is it. Uh, combining useful frameworks with the Fig Jam environment makes for an experience that just feels good. And it's not overcomplicated. Um, yeah, let's look at look at all those smiling faces. Hi team, y'all are the best. Um, thanks for being here today. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna get into the good stuff so we can feel like that. Um, so say hey to the manager starter pack. Uh, so this is built to cultivate an awesome culture here at Mixpanel product design and beyond, hopefully after today. Um, so yeah, we're going to crack it open now and dive into a few of the templates, like Brent said, and we're just starting with sharing expectations. So this template is geared towards those initial one-on-ones, and it's all about getting clarity and consensus on expectations for each other. Um, it's one of those foundational exercises when kicking off a new working relationship. So each person takes a few minutes with some low five beats. Uh, to write down what they expect of each other. Um, 
So in this example that you're seeing here, Teresa is DJ's manager. And a couple things DJ expects from Teresa are for Teresa to help DJ prioritize feedback from stakeholders and push them into a stretch goal occasionally. So as a bonus, over to the right in this template, um, you can learn even more about expectations through doing a quick exercise on good and bad manager qualities or experiences from the past. Um, so a little personal story. So I recently made the switch uh, from IC into the management world, starting in a hybrid role. Um, but I can speak from personal experience on how activities like this one have helped me feel more comfortable navigating this role. Um, this was actually one of the first activities I did with my direct report. Um, I was able to pull in a few different sections that I thought would be most helpful for the two of us from some of the various templates. Um, and just jamming together was really nice. So our original jam file has since expanded to include even more. Um, and yeah, it's our work in progress safe space. So I'll hand it back over to Brent to demo the next bud. Very cool. Thank you, Kaylin. I think what's neat about that framework or that kind of template as well is you kind of see if you look across the entire organization from junior designer to VP, you should be moving those and setting those expectations kind of all the way across, which is going to be super fun. So building team trust, I'll get to that. All right. Um, you click on that link, it'll take us here. So this is what we call the biceps motivators or core values exercise. And it's largely built around Paloma Medina's work. Um, you can see biceps as an acronym, belonging, improvement, choice, equality, predictability, and significance. Uh, there's also different flavors of this. You've seen Daniel Pink's drive work. So mastery, autonomy, belonging. What I like about this, it's for managers, it's great to understand like how to inspire and provide real direction. So it's great to understand also anti-patterns. So what to avoid and what demotivates a designer direct report. And then I can connect the work tangibly to things that energize them and build momentum. So one of the things I can understand is like, how does this person respond to change in the organization or how I might be able to understand how she or he would respond or feel about a new initiative that's happening within mixed panel for designers. It's really nice because you get to kind of do some self-reflection, understand what motivates you or what brings you energy, um, prioritize what, what motivates you um, and start to be, bring in work and pull in work that really just kind of feeds that. And then I know from a personal experience, sometimes maybe a seemingly small change at work might trigger kind of a visceral or emotional response to me. And that's time for me to go back to my own biceps motivators and look at the sheet and think about maybe what core values might've been violated and why I'm responding so, so heavily to the, towards this. So how would I, how would I set this up? Probably do a little bit of explaining like I am right now over maybe a Loom video. I'll send a link to a designer and direct report and maybe kick it off asynchronously. Um, it doesn't have to be async. You could do this live during one-on-one, -on -one, um, but itself will kind of sit with it over time. And then the employer designer will, will stack rank them. So they'll drop what kind of two or three biceps or core beliefs that are feeling nourished right now and then stack rank them kind of top to bottom. And then what I would do would come over here is start to connect that and how I can support them. So let's kind of zoom in here to a real world example. Um, let's look at DJ. He's a web designer on the mixed panel team. Um, and Teresa is his manager. Uh, he's put improvement and progress as one of his core beliefs. And he wants the, his work to kind of move towards a really significant goal and outcome in the company and really kind of get that kind of spotlight for the work. Teresa can support him. Uh, she has a pretty significant Twitter following. And so uh, the work that he's doing kind of in progress or maybe uh, at the launch She'll retweet that out um, and help support him there, kind of give him some give him spotlight. He also doesn't, DJ, also doesn't feel like he's arrived. He's still learning and growing. And the skills matter to him as he continues to kind of um, develop. So what does it mean uh, for Teresa to support him there? So Teresa will set up a mentoring donut with Allie from the marketing team. And Allie's really good at A-B testing and experimentation. So 
DJ wants to grow in this area, understand like how to convert and how his pages and his work really helps kind of drive the business. And then on a more personal note, you know, so he really kind of, well, like three and a half here, three and a half, maybe four kind of laddering to one. So he, DJ really cares about purpose and having his work have a clear sense of significance. And it also wants to make sure that his work that he does is, is really uh, access to all and equality is really important to him. So much so that he's put together a proposal for accessibility. And Teresa can help him there by reviewing and getting some feedback. But then also Teresa can also be in that meeting with leadership as he goes through the, and walks through this proposal, support him there and just, just presence alone. So just to kind of zoom out a little bit, this is just a great little kind of deep dive on um, what motivates and demotivates designers, managers, direct reports. And it's a great way for me, myself as a manager to connect like real work, um, upcoming projects to what they care about the most. Alrighty, I'm gonna pass it back over to Caitlin. Thanks, Brent. All right, so nurturing impact. So yeah, under nurturing impact, um, we have this bud called Give Away Your Legos. Um, and this is modeled after Give Away Your Legos by Molly Graham, which is linked in the description when y'all get into that template. Um, so the general idea uh, with this template is that over time, the manager's stickies of responsibilities should move from left uh, to right. And this is really a great artifact to refer to during a promotion cycle. So it's a living, shareable document of progress during one-on-ones and calibration time. Um, and it can really help start that dialogue around growth areas and interesting opportunities. So what we're looking at here, uh, think about this as a snapshot in time. These are examples of things Teresa currently owns. Um, and together, Teresa and DJ add a bunch of stickies, discuss. Um, and yeah, they really go through finding balance and an overall view of various opportunities and potential stretch goals. So ideally, these different responsibilities would be aligned with DJ's growth areas and interests, which, you know, they figured out using all those other templates. Um, yeah, and that makes it easier to understand just what to place where. Um, and yeah, this is, uh, you can think about it as like all stickies across the entire org would flow from left to right as people move up within the company. This is just a little view, a little snapshot between two levels in the org. Um, so yeah, that was give away your Legos. And now I'm going to toss it back over to Brent and we're going to do some super fun stuff. I can't wait. All right. So now it's reflection time for everyone on the call. This will be really fun. So what I'm going to do now is let's open up this link. Let's get into our icebreaker. Let's see. I'm going to put this in the chat. If it's not already. Excellent. All right. Let's see um, if we can get 277 people into this fig jam file. And while you're doing that, I will walk through kind of what this is. So this is really great for a initial kind of one-on-one, -on -one, um, those initial kind of conversations, because for a designer, oh my gosh, I'm, I need to take a minute to kind of just capture this. This is incredible. It's great to see everyone kind of in the file. Wild. Um, what's really special about this, this particular template is uh, it's great to identify as a designer. So if you are starting a new relationship, that's really in, about communicating your preferences. So if your way you like to give and receive feedback, the way you like to work and your focus hours, it's you know how you want to um, maybe cameras on, camera off, or how you like to approach a problem or solution. It's great for managers because you're just understanding how to develop and build empathy, right? So you're understanding, gosh, how do I coach you well? Um, how can I meet you where you are? So let me zoom out a little bit and kind of talk about what this potentially is or how we could. Wow, this is incredible. Um, so you can see what we've got here. It's a, kind of a spectrum. You know, there's really kind of no one way to say, well, I'm here or I'm there. So what I do is, let's say, put it in a real life example. I'm going to press E. I'm going to get a stamp going, get my avatar here. Um, 
I am in Austin, Texas, and everyone on the team, most of the team, it kind of snaps to San Francisco Pacific time. And so work when I'm in the flow, block time for focus work. I really have those two hours in the morning to be heads down. So I'm pretty here. That's kind of where I am. And so what I'll do is uh, just jump in here and pop in an avatar if you feel like where you are. Like for me, like I'm going to just hold that down and I'm firmly in place. Uh, it's probably not going to move anytime soon. So uh, I'm going to turn on some, uh, gosh, let's do some lo-fi beats and for about five minutes and let's see how many avatars we can get on this. Great to see some familiar faces too. Thanks everyone from the Figma team and Mixed Panel team for being on this call. All right, so if you've kind of completed that or you, you go ahead and got some bonus areas here that we like to kind of pull out, um, you know, this is also kind of extra. Like when we want to talk about like, I recharge my batteries by what? Spending time outdoors. It's a great way to kind of understand like, hey, this is kind of how we like to, Spend time together. So think about a deep dive around getting to know them, what their preferences are, how they like to make decisions. Bonus, I'm an Enneagram four, no surprise there. And then when I'm stressed, how do I like to manage that? And then you unpack that for a few minutes and talk about how can I support you here?
Excellent. Thank you everyone for being really open and honest and uh, participating in this. This is really incredible to see and appreciate your courage for putting just a snapshot kind of where you are right now and what your preferences are. And what I usually do now, I mean, there's not like 300 on here, but there's usually just two. We kind of talk about kind of where we are. And I let I let the d designer or direct report kind of go first. So I'm not biasing them. Ask a little bit. I usually go one by one. And eh, maybe it, we'll go uh, all the way down and then I'll go back and kind of walk through my selections as well. But it's really about, you know, unpacking kind of what those mean and having a, again, it's an icebreaker. It's a conversation starter. This becomes kind of a manager or designer read me. You take a snapshot of this, you come back to it, maybe six months to a year and discuss how that's changed over time. So thank you. Very cool. All right. Um, so I'm going to come back to our regularly scheduled program here and just kind of what's been the response from the team around this. This is Ryan uh, and he is the staff designer at Mixed Panel. And I think he was really in encouraged to connect the personal satisfaction to his professional growth, kind of what motivates him, what gets his juices flowing to how well he does it at Mixed Panel. And that's sort of connected to our employee NPS or ENPS. And as leaders and managers, we're, we're graded on high functioning, satisfied team. So A, excited that this tool kind of opened up and unlocked some things for Ryan. And be glad this is kind of a, a way and a vehicle in which uh, we can get satisfaction, not just with Brian, but across the whole team. This is Mary. Uh, she's a product designer at Mixpanel. And this was great um, for that initial kind of uh, rapport building. Again, like during the onboarding process, it's kind of, uh, you can't really circumvent or shortcut a lot of trust, but exercises and templates like this, like really help build that kind of uh, foundational trust and support. And then self-reflection, this is Katie. Hello, Katie. Uh, she just has some quick things to say about just self-reflection. Hasn't done it very much in the past. So it's really fun to kind of maybe zoom out and think about kind of, gosh, what motivates me? What doesn't? Where can I go? And um, how can I connect that to the work that I do at Mixed Panel? Really just about kind of knowing thyself. And there are plenty more frameworks and stuff that we can include here. I'm a huge fan of Enneagram, obviously. And there's also things like Myers-Briggs. Uh, if you want to go maybe a little bit deeper, that's not more professional and like less personality test. Clifton Strengths is also great. A little on the pricey side, but it's really exhaustive and connect like what you love about work to kind of your core beliefs. So, okay. So just to wrap things up, um, wanted to maybe leave you with three takeaways. Like what can you do like tomorrow or next? What can you do next week? I would say the first step is make time for career conversations. So put something on the calendar with your boss just to zoom out and talk about a longer horizon. And maybe even does, it doesn't need to be in that context. You could book some time with yourself and talk about career conversations. Use these templates and use these frameworks to kind of zoom out and do some self-reflection. It's always good. Uh, or with your mentor, for that matter. Reuse, remix. Break these templates, fork them, tweak them, smash them, bang them. We love to understand like what's working, what's not. Uh, this has been reworked and iterated on many, many, many times. So uh, we don't particularly think they're done. We'd love to hear stories about how you're using them or how you've kind of modified them or tweaked them or whatever. So please share stories um, with us. We'd love to connect with you and hear how you've used them. Um, we're not on Facebook or Twitter, uh, but you can connect with us on LinkedIn for sure. And we'll we'll get back to you. And then here's the moment. So here are links to our six templates. You can also find them, um, believe in the show notes or the fine folks from Figma will link to them as well. And uh, yeah, we'd love to kind of get these in your hands and under really help you move along uh, with your professional development and both just as you develop and grow as a manager and leader as well. It's been a real uh, honor talking with y'all today and, and sharing these templates with you. I'll give it over to Caitlin to say the kind of the last final words before we get into Q&A. Yeah, thanks, Brent. And thanks everyone for getting in the file. That was super fun to see. It's wild in there. Um, and yeah, shout out to Figma for this awesome opportunity. It's yeah. 
That was that was great. I mean, I love the moment where we all got into the file together. Um, I love a good open session moment. So really exciting to see all that. We will now hop into our Q and A portion. As a reminder, there is a Q and A um, button that you can use to ask any questions. We already have some for Brent and Caitlin. So uh, let's get started. Um, here's a good one. Um, are these shared expectations templates private for those involved in the one-on-one, -on -one, or is it something more open across the team? Well, that's a great question. I keep all of these private between me and my direct report. Um, and I, if they want them to share it publicly, then I'll ask permission, but the default is private. I want yeah. this, and why I do that is because I, I want that to be a safe space where um, we can collaborate together, kind of co-shape, you know, future together with them. Um, so that that's a very safe space and private space for, for us. Awesome. And like kind of a follow-up, how do you handle permissions for sensitive content and conversations that is documented in a Jam board? Have you found like any hesitation with that or just curious about your process for that? Um, I'm not sure if I totally understand the question, but if there are some clear, uh, like sensitive or maybe code of conduct or handbook, like violation, something like that, it's immediately reported and mm -hmm. it goes through all the proper channels with people team. Um, nothing is, you know, I, you know, part of that is either it's the reason why I guess part of the, the one of the benefits of open sourcing something like this is um, it could be a way for uh, people team or HR to facilitate a conversation with that employee and not just designer like manager direct report. So um, again, it's kind of a it's not, it's less about kind of the, well, these do facilitate a relationship and build that, but it's really about creating an environment where uh, there's a sense of play, um, flexibility, mm -hmm. comfortability, where that kind of dialogue can happen. Yeah, that makes sense. We have another one about the how I roll template. It seems like it'd be useful to do maybe a few times a year or anytime there's a change in the team. How often do you do an exercise like that? Yeah. So the spectrum, the how I roll one, uh, I usually do that. That's usually during the first one-on-one. -on -one. That's the initial kind of either when I've, if the team is inherited and I need to understand them quickly and they need to understand me, that's a great kind of overview um, to run to understand preferences. So that's, that's a great kind of moment um, where I would re recommend. That's been the most fruitful for me to do it that moment. Uh, I think coming back to it after uh, there's been some potential like organizational change or there's maybe the team has been restructured, something like that. Uh, people just change over time. And I think the nature of these relationships at work are pretty dynamic. So I, it's good to come back to them like once a year at least. Yeah, I totally agree. I think, you know, as 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 things go, we always change over time. So I definitely like the idea of coming back to it. Um, another great one. So the get to know each other, is it mostly just for one-on-ones or have you tried doing it as like a whole team? We have not done this as a whole team, although- That's a good idea. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, many of the designers are on that call and I think they did it. So I think we'll we go through <laughs> that, that template and I think we just did it. I think we just did it as a team. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, do you use these as part of the hiring process ever to assess fit within a team or, or would you do something similar for hiring? We do all of our recruiting and hiring in Fig Jam, but we don't mm -hmm. use these templates or utilize this. This is kind of from the moment of like day one to year one. And that's kind of over the course of how we would leverage templates like this. We do leverage, uh, Figma files and Fig Jam and our recruiting, uh, the lovely Mark Johnson has put together a great about us and what it's like to be on the team at Mixed Panel. And that's been heavily circulated. It's kind of a nice like microsite slash presentation slash peek behind the curtains of what we're, what the design team is like. 
And then we do um, our collaborative exercise during the interview process in Fig Jam as well. But, you know, this is, you know, it's something we consider for sure. I don't, I don't know if it'd be, it'd be repurposed and reswizzled in a way that would be way more appropriate during the interview process. But mm -hmm. we leverage these templates between kind of like day one offer stage and kind of performance review. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. And we definitely look forward to kind of seeing what those look like at different stages, how you utilize Fig Jam for that. Um, another question someone someone pointed out that these frameworks can sometimes be limited by the manager's ability. So how do you circum circumvent these at mixed panel? That's a good, that's a great question. Well, um, my hope, my aspiration, my aim was to create these templates to help develop that muscle for managers and to help kind of make it very easy to facilitate that kind of dialogue um, because Figma and Fig Jam is easy. The hope was that getting a conversation during one-on-one -on -one with a designer or a direct report would make that, would lower that barrier, um, barrier to entry and facilitate that in a much more helpful way. Um, it doesn't, you know, a framework is a, you know, a framework, it's not, um, it's not a silver bullet, you know, at the end of the day, it's two people trying to dialogue about really important things. And this is just one of many tools in the toolkit to help facilitate that. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've found that, you know, being new to the management world, this has actually been helpful, like in thinking about the skills and the experiences that I maybe don't have, like I'm able to lean on a little bit of this, um, and figure out like what makes sense for me and what makes sense for my direct report and what we need in the moment. And yeah, it's been really helpful uh, to have something to start with and have something to experiment with. So I actually feel like it's it's helped to circumvent the fact that I don't have a lot of that um, experience. So, yeah. Cool, well, now we got a question on the bicep topic. As a manager, how to handle this relationship while I want to help designer A, with designer B skills and connect them, but the designer B might be hesitant or can't get along with designer A for some reasons. How to facilitate friction in these conversations? Ooh, uh, excellent question. I think that's another set of templates that we can work on. <laughs> Those co critical conversation template or something like that. I'll make a note of that and, and help. I think that is a step one is kind of knowing your perspective and knowing uh, your story first before you enter that conversation. So yeah, maybe there's some pairing there with the biceps core values and then maybe a fig jam to help facilitate like critical and difficult conversations. Awesome. Well, I love the idea of now getting inspiration for more templates. Um, speaking of, how did this, program kickstart at mixed panel did people in hr um folks introduce this or was that any sort of collaboration within your teams i, I guess i can speak to that um it was kind of an evolution uh over the course of just being a manager i was in a different kind of tools uh either like a hr tool or Notion, we do a lot of writing in Notion, um, or even Dropbox paper at different contexts and different roles. And uh, it was very kind of rigid and inflexible. And I ended up, the evolution was, we would always start there, we would end up in Figma and Fig Jam anyways. So the thinking was, let's just start here. It's kind of infinite canvas. It's a place for us that's kind of wide open spaces and let's just think bigger. And then we can go back to and capture that in like an HR tool if we need to. So yeah, um, it's part of our organization across design, product, and engineering that, you know, it's so Fig Jam and Figma is so embedded in everything that we do. It just made a ton of sense to kind of be the water, not the rocks and meet them where they are. Yeah, I feel like it just happened organically. Um, Brent had started by pulling together some really awesome uh, notion sort of like a lot of these were living in notion to start. And I remember some of our initial conversations 
it was like, you know, sort of struggling to get vulnerable and really dig into some of those things. And I think it was like, let's just throw some stickies around and see where we go. And yeah, that felt, that felt easier and it evolved from there. Awesome. Well, we have about um, time for the next three questions. Y'all have been killing it with questions. So um, next one, can this framework or these frameworks be adapted to peer 360 feedback and reviews, especially in contexts where you want to build strong working relationships between team members? Ooh, great idea. Yes, maybe. I think so. Like, I think that uh, there's probably something there because the fig jams are infinitely shareable within your organization um, with a little bit of instruction and guidance. Anyone can jump in and give feedback. So I don't see why not. Again, I think the depending on what exercise or framework you'd want to leverage, might need to revise it, edit it, or iterate a bit, but I don't see why not. Great, great point. Yeah. I think as always, templates are are there to just be a start, but we have to remember they can be adaptable to whatever specific conversation we're having. Um Next question, how do you use these shared expectations as they relate to performance evaluations? Um, what do they do? The, do your performance evaluations look different than these conversations or are they like all combined? Well, I can speak a little bit to kind of how we're using these now. Um, we, and actually there's, a, there's another, <laughs> for performance review, we have another fig jam where we're trying to blast stickies in a kind of framework that's more kind of a triangle related. So you think about what energizes me, what grows me professionally and what's excellent for the business. And as we kind of move around projects and things like that, we want to land on something that hopefully is kind of landing in the center there. It's not kind of skewed one way or the other. And I think that's really important to kind of think about, okay, here are Next, next to the what, because it's an infinite canvas, it makes this possible. You know, next, next to that, we have you know the motivators and what I care about. Um, below that, we could have giving away Legos, and we can talk about specifics, a personalized job description, how we can either exchange expectation or maybe start delegating work as part of a growth area. And then you know all of that kind of lives, all the is is surrounding kind of the three kind of areas in that sweet spot of like growth professionally, what levels you up, what's important and impactful to the business, and then, you know, what actually gives you energy. So um, I'm happy to share that at, an, at a later point too. It's really fun. We're just doing that now. I don't know, something I was just kind of tinkering with. We just got off of our like performance review and growth cycle. So it's kind of new, kind of fresh, probably need to get some feedback on that and iterate, but that's kind of how we're leveraging all these together. Awesome. Yeah. We'll look forward to maybe seeing those one day. Um, we're going to end on a really great question. So when your team's preferences for how they work go against the overall process that's already there, how do you manage those differences with the greater team? Do you have any, do you have an expectation for folks to bend a little? For example, if someone prefers to remain um, autonomous and doesn't like daily async check-ins, but in order to keep projects on track, these processes are needed. Caitlin, do you have a thought? I have one, I have maybe one thought. Yeah, maybe we can bounce back and forth. That's a really good question. Um, yeah, I think one of the things that is nice about Mixpanel is like those processes are pretty flexible. Um, between different like working groups. So I think that sort of sets the foundation for doing what works best for teams and individuals. Um, yeah, and I feel like these templates, you know, help to understand those individuals and what those needs are. And then it's up to us as managers to figure out how to create that environment that both works for the individual and for the team as a whole. Um, Sure, yeah, there might be places where there's 
opportunities to, you know, push a little or flex or stretch, but, you know, you have to identify if that's like something that's going to be a positive, like growth challenge for the person, or if it's just something that's going to make them feel uncomfortable. And, um, yeah, but yeah, I'd say mixed panel is a pretty flexible place for that. So it feels like we can, we can try a number of different things and see how it works. Yeah. Brent, what do you think? I, I don't, well, I think in theoretically, I think that's why these exercises exist to draw out something like that. And then that would, I would pin, put that away and really tease that out. I understand kind of like, why would this not be okay to maybe miss a stand up during the week? Um, and then kind of really pull on that thread and understand. And if there's ways to support them on, you know, maybe they have to take their kid to childcare or something like that, and they won't be able to attend stand up. Well, um, I think we need to create a context and environment where that's flexible um, and they can still be an adult, get their job done too. So I think that's, in, in essence, is, that's kind of why these exist is to uncover and unearth kind of things I don't know about you and kind of ways that I can help unblock you so you can have the life that you have and also be great at work and love working here. I, and there's maybe one example, which is um, cameras off, cameras on during that kind of icebreaker, get to know you. Uh, just over time, you know, during the week, uh, designer just eyesight was really bad. And it was like Zoom fatigue is a real thing, especially during COVID. So turning the cameras off um, when you're kind of in a group setting or a group Zoom call, hey, that is totally okay. Even if we do one-on-one -on -one with the cameras off, it's just ask permission. We can do it. That's totally fine. So, or yeah, I think it's all about getting that additional context and making room for those conversations to understand where that friction is. Well, 100%. thank you so much for answering all those questions. We had some really great ones. Uh, we're just going to wrap up now. So I want to thank everybody in the chat, all the viewers for joining us today. Hope you gained something out of this, we will have all of the links that we mentioned today to, for the templates in our follow-up. And um, yeah, thank you once again, Brent and Caitlin. If you want to check out future live streams, you can do that at figma.com slash events. And if you have ideas for your own future live stream or just want to chat with us, send them to uh, community at figma.com. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.